If we think somewhat carefully about Descartes' formulation, or our formulation of Descartes' argument, we see that that first premise is sort of a definition of what it is for something to be God. And if you think about it, a definition doesn't imply that the thing exists. Remember, when we're talking about Descartes' cosmological argument, his idea causation argument, we're talking about, you know, mythical creatures. There was the hippogriff, the combination of a horse and a griffin, a griffin being, uh, you know, a lion and, oh lord, a serpent. I almost uh, didn't remember what that was. This, this, but from the fact that we have a definition of what a hippogriff is, it does that by itself doesn't imply that the thing actually exists. So I think what this is suggesting is that really when you read number one it's if God exists then God has every perfection and we're gonna have to read it the same way because from the fact that we have a definition that God is the supremely perfect being, we can't in any way under assume that he actually exists. So it seems that the best conclusion we can get from the whole argument would be, if God exists, then God exists. Well, that's really not a very strong argument. And that's not quite what we're going to get. Now, if we think about the evaluation that we're talking about, you know, this whether this is a definition and, and the, uh, the implications of a definition really gets us into kind of some pretty sticky metaphysical and, you know, issue, issues and some philosophical logic issues. You know, so I want to suggest at least that initially it looks like the conclusion that Descartes comes to doesn't clearly follow from his premises. Which I think for Descartes is kind of an upsetting end to you know, the meditations, because we looked at the cosmological argument, his idea causation argument, in the third meditation and we didn't find that one completely convincing we're looking at this ontological argument and we have not found that one completely convincing but remember Descartes needs to prove God's existence to fulfill his rationalist dream that he's going to be able to get past his solipsism, his just knowledge of the contents of his mind, and be able to then know that there can't be an evil genie, genius, excuse me, um, deceiving him every time he believes something. Because God exists, and God is a benevolent being and wouldn't let somebody deceive him all the time. So, Descartes, ultimately, it looks like, ultimately, Descartes' program is not fulfilled. He can't reason his way to the external world. Now, I don't want you to jump to any crazy conclusions about Descartes. That is, why do we study Descartes? I mean, he was wrong. He got to the... You know, he couldn't get out there. He couldn't get past skepticism and past his own mind out out to the real world. But nonetheless, I think when you look at what Descartes has to say, I think there's really a lot to be learned from it. First of all, he's the first one to notice about sort of the privileged relationship that we have with ourselves and with our thoughts. He comes up with this whole terminology of ideas, which was brand new in Descartes' time. In fact, today, we're familiar, we have psychology, people studying, um, sort of the nature of the human mind 
the, where ideas come from, why people think in certain ways that they do. Um, without Descartes' pioneering work on the mind, we never would have gotten the science of psychology. And bear in mind, in his time, there was no science of psychology. In addition to which, he really learned something very important about epistemology, about the theory of knowledge. That is, he found certain beliefs that were, and remember we, early in the semester we talked about self-evident. Remember we see that in the Declaration of Independence. We hold these truths to be self-evident. And we see that Descartes has discovered this notion that there are certain certain propositions, certain things that we know and they are they serve as their own evidence, some of them that I think, you know, that I'm a thinking thing, that I exist. Um, God exists is not quite one of them, but had it gotten there, we would have moved, Descartes would have been able to move his program along to its to a successful conclusion. But nonetheless, we really learn a lot about knowledge by Descartes. We learn a lot about justification, about reasons for doubt, certainty, whether you need certainty or not. And in fact, without Descartes, you wouldn't have had Locke coming up with what's our standard you know, realist metaphysics and our kind of naive realist view of how we come to know things in our theory of perception. So I think we're kind of concluding with Descartes' ontological argument. You know, it was an interesting try. Obviously, it's somewhat controversial what I'm saying. That is, there are people that think that there is a version of the ontological argument that works. Maybe it's not Descartes. And in fact, there's a contemporary philosopher named Alvin Plantinga, who's a uh, professor at um, Notre Dame uh, in Indiana. And he is well known for his work on the ontological argument, and he thinks he actually has a you know, a more complicated version of the argument, but one that works. But at least for now, it looks like, you know, Descartes' two arguments for God's existence don't make it, and his whole program doesn't quite make it.